Schnitzel. Is there anything I have to explain about the topic? I don't think so. I think everyone is familiar with a schnitzel. I show you today in this video how to make a proper schnitzel. I've made a schnitzel video before but I'm not entirely happy with it. It's been one of my first videos and I think my videos now turn out much better than back then. So I'm doing this again and I will go through a few things that I forgot to mention at my last video. So first of all, the original schnitzel from Vienna, the Vienna schnitzel, is made with veal. In Germany we do that too but more often we use pork or sometimes even chicken meat and uh, for the sole reason that it's cheaper and we like that too and the veal that I can buy here where I live is so thinly cut that I can not really use it for a schnitzel uh, to pound it down a little bit it's not working with that so I had to settle for some pork today and it doesn't matter in my opinion I think it tastes just as good then there are some people that think that a schnitzel has to be fried in ghee. I don't think that's necessary. I prefer oil. It's healthier and it works, in my opinion, at least as good, if not even better. And then there is the question, what are the sides for a schnitzel? So traditionally in Germany, we sided with either French fries or with potato salad. In the past, schnitzel has been served with capers, but nowadays, I, I would say since the mid of the 20th century, we serve the schnitzel with a wedge of lemon. So let's get started with the recipe. The ingredients that you need are, of course, the meat. So I have four pork chops. I'm not entirely happy with the quality and size of this meat. It's unfortunately the only thing I could get at my grocery and it's supposed to be a thick cut. I don't think so. However, that's the only thing I could get so I have to deal with it now. Then you need some flour. Here's a little bit of water and two eggs which I have to beat in a little bit and salt and pepper breadcrumbs and these are plain breadcrumbs um, if you want to use breadcrumbs with parmesan or herbs in it that's okay too but in germany we don't have that we just use regular breadcrumbs you will also need a little bit of water and some oil for frying so first i will add some salt and some pepper to the eggs And I whisk this. Okay. Then I take the meat. You can cut away the fat here, but I'm not doing that. I actually leave it where it is. And then I have to pound this really flat. Some people put some cling wrap on this. I don't think it's necessary. If you wash and dry your meat, you don't need that. And you can save on plastic here. Okay, so with the pounding hammer, which used to be nice and shiny until I put it in the dishwasher, um, this is supposed to break the meat a little bit and so if it's really really thin then it's just right so i put this aside and do this with the other ones now you can see that these uh, slices become quite large and that's fine um, there's one thing I want to tell you. If you want to make a party, like an Oktoberfest or something, you can cut these into smaller pieces and fry smaller schnitzel and serve them as a snack. So I'm doing one of these to show you how that would look like. And now we're getting to the part where I do the braiding. And before I braid the meat, I want to add a little more of the salt and pepper. And in order for these things to stick to the meat, 
I'm going to use a little bit of water, not much, and spray it onto the meat. And then I put some salt on it and some pepper. And then it goes first into the flour. And the reason for this is to separate the braiding from the meat so that there's like a thin layer of air between the braiding and the meat. Okay, and then it goes into the egg. And lastly, into the breadcrumbs. And if you want, you can double braid it. You can go back into the eggs and then into the breadcrumbs again. But I'm doing only one. Okay, and put it here. So next, just repeat it with all the meat pieces that I have. And this goes now to the stove and needs to be fried. So you want your schnitzel to basically float in the oil. That's why I'm using a lot of oil in the pan. And since this meat has been pounded to a very flat shape, it will not take very long to fry this. So keep that in mind, if you fry it too long, it might turn out that the meat is a little bit too chewy. Okay, so the oil is hot. And I can already do the first one here. That looks good. And you see, while I'm frying the other side, I'm constantly putting some oil on the top of the first side. And for those who think they can just deep fry the schnitzel, I do not recommend it. for a moment so you can better hear me. So after frying, you put this onto some paper towel and uh, that's in terms to remove some of the oil and I continue to fry the meat. you will get it served at a restaurant and you have done a good job with your schnitzel if it is very nice and crisp and that's what happened here also if there's a little bit of an air uh, gap between the breading and the meat so I think that looks delicious what do you think and these little schnitzel here for parties you can just put on a stick well, probably need to do this with my hands and Put these onto a nice plate and serve them as like some sort of uh, schnitzel lollipops. So that's what you can do with it. You can also put like two or three of them between a dinner roll with some mayonnaise and a salad leaf and eat that as a sandwich. That is very delicious too. 
Yeah, so I hope you liked this recipe. I hope you like to do your schnitzel like this too, because that's the best outcome you can get. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell button and stay tuned for more videos.